All right. Hi, Jess. Hey. How is? Long time no talk. Yeah, mm. long time no talk. Um, mm. uh, maybe some people watching still remember Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> From Sunat demi cinta. Saya tidak bisa. Hachan sama orang yang tak pernah disunat. Tapi Jennifer, sama itu udah disunat. Demi cintanya kepada kamu. Oh. Jennifer? Uh, good times. They were good times. Uh, yeah, and you never even um, spoke Bahasa at that time, but you, no. you you did a perfect job of reading your lines. <laughs> yeah, it was a thrilling oh. series. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I thought I wanted to ask you about COVID in Canada. You know, who's complaining and what are they complaining about and what are people doing during this time? Um, so yeah, what's it like in Canada these days? So right now we're on like a semi lockdown. We keep going, like it keeps changing like week to week. And um, so all the like hairdressers, hair salons, um, restaurants are closed. They're only doing like takeout. And so restaurants, hair salons, tattoo parlors, like, um, massage parlors, like personal care. The, these weird businesses are closed and I'm not really sure what, what prompted these certain businesses to be closed, but retail, clo like retail stores are still allowed to be open. So I'm still working in the mall with like mandatory masks. And then we're capacity changes all the time too. So right now we're only allowed to have like two customers in the store because there's like three workers and we're like outnumbering the customers because of the capacity and it, the ca capacity keeps getting lower like it started at 10 and then it was seven and now um if we have two workers we're allowed to have three customers in the store okay. With, and we all have masks on. yeah all right so yeah it's a semi lockdown there's some other businesses that are closed too we'll see if anything actually opens up the 21st or if they're gonna keep it closed again and keep pushing the lockdown or whatever semi lockdown because things are still open so i don't really know oh. do you feel that your area is under control COVID um the, case, the cases are, are rising it i guess it depends how you look at it and what your opinion of it is because it's like some people don't even think that the tests are valid too like um like even my coworker said that her that like three of her friends had an appointment to go get um, a COVID test done, and then um, they didn't make the appointment, but they got a test saying that they tested positive. So they're just giving out all these positives and um, saying that the asymptomatic ones are super valid. And um, hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't really know how much like from my, from the research I've done, it is definitely possible to spread it asymptomatically, but it is m a lot more rare yeah. that you're spreading it asymptomatically. So, um, so you're think you think um, they they might be a little bit like overboard. Yeah. Okay. I'm thinking so a little bit. And what are yeah. they, like what are they doing um, to help the businesses? Like, do they like are people getting fired or what's going on? I think there is still um, benefits for um, businesses like from the government and stuff. Like, I'm still getting a relief benefit that's paying my entire rent and it's more than I've ever made before. So I guess I'm very privileged. And is that, um, is that just you because of your uh, situation or is that everybody? Because when the lockdown first started, the mall did close. So I technically had lost my job at that point to COVID. And then when it reopened up, I'm just getting like I, my, my hours are limited because of it. So I guess that's probably why I'm still qualifying for the benefit. But yeah, like the, the restrictions were like, they got really bad in November and they said that we weren't allowed to see, you know, family over Christmas and stuff. Um, yeah, they changed it for like, um, if you're like a single person, you can go see one family member, but social gatherings are completely banned. Um, and people are yeah. obeying these rules or is I it? I don't think they are. I don't think they are. Um, I don't really know, but they are cracking down. I have heard, like, it's just rumors, but I have definitely heard that people have been getting charged, like, if they're having a party. Like, I, my mom heard that um, one of her, or one of her neighbors um, had 
12 different households at a party at their house and each of them got charged a thousand dollar fine um so they are giving out a thousand dollar fines apparently yeah for partying all right well i I, yeah i think that definitely the spread is going on in these social gatherings because that's the only time that people are not wearing masks right well you i mean you lived in indonesia for a while like can you imagine trying to control people and like control the virus they like that's the thing too one of the most You're memorable right. videos I one of the most memorable video memorable videos I saw during COVID was a, a family broke into the hospital to grab the their the dead body of their family member like with force took the body oh home God. to wash it and grieve and to bury them like not according to COVID protocol because they're just like you can't tell me what to do with my family member like I'm going in there give me the body. Um, yeah. that's like Indonesia for you, right? Uh, so like, yeah. how can you control, how you can't control no. people? <laughs> no, yeah, that's very, very difficult. I can't imagine no, having when, to control That wouldn't happen. <laughs> um, what types of people are complaining the most and what are they complaining about then? Like, are they complaining um, mostly about, uh, oh, damn, it's really hard to find work or, oh, damn, I can't go visit my family during Christmas. What's the main complaint? Is it financial uh, or more like this, they, they're complaining about the social distancing? Yeah, kind of everything people are complaining about. It's tough to, to trust what people are saying. So people are kind of mad about everything here. Like people are really mad. <laughs> In Canada, what do you do when you lose your job and you have to pay rent and you can't cover it? Like the government would step in for yeah. everybody? Yeah. So if, yeah, they have been paying people out, like, a crazy amount. Like, um, we're, like, in debt now in Canada more than before um, because he, yeah, he's literally paying everybody out. If you lose your job because of COVID, you will get the benefit. So you wouldn't have to downgrade to, like, stay in the cheapest possible place you can find and have, like, three roommates. They would cover your living expenses? Yeah. You get two thousand dollars. Um, you get two thousand dollars a month. Yeah. And is that enough to live in Canada? I haven't been there in forever, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, enough? like I upgraded. <laughs> I, I I got to move into a nicer place because of this whole thing. So, it's quite privileged, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, okay, so you, so financially, you are better off during COVID. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's paying everybody two thousand dollars a month to to live and survive. And then I'm also making um, money for my job that I'm still, like I'm limited on hours, but I still work like three days a week and I still make some money out of that, so. Okay, but you would be underemployed though. Like if you just had the part-time job, you would be in a bad situation, right? Without the benefits? Yeah. So this, this, uh, going back to the village and moving into mom's basement, it's not necessary in Canada. No, I haven't seen that. Really? Like people that are that kind of like a ton of money in the oil field, probably they're making less, obviously. Um, but it is enough to live on for the average single person. Mm. Um, but yeah, um, probably people have gotten um, a, if they if they've lose lost their job and they're only surviving on the benefit. There are some people that are making a lot less money, obviously, mm. than they used to. If they mm. had a really good paying job that they lost. So um, how do you feel about uh, Justin Trudeau handling the situation then? Do you think he he was a good COVID president or prime minister, sorry? Canadian travelers should return to Canada via commercial means while it is still possible to do so. Let me be clear. If you're abroad, it's time for you to come home. The strength of our country is our capacity to come together and care for each other, especially in times of need. Um... Not well. I I don't know. I think he's um, doing well of helping the citizens pay for everything. Um, maybe it possibly he should have closed the airports in the beginning sooner, or like to kind of avoid some of the situation. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's really avoidable if their if their tactics of lockdowns are are doing anything, or if they're actually making things worse. Which yeah, it seems like he's just pissing off the citizens. People are not believing what's going on. So I think that they're intentionally um, 
you know, partying and spreading it around and stuff. Oh, okay. okay. But lots of all the politicians in Alberta are all breaking their own social distancing guidelines. They're all going to Hawaii and then they have to like resign because everybody's piling up on them because they, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't think um, people are really scared of catching the virus really here. How many people really do have it out there? It's kind of like a mystery. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is a mystery. And like I said, the, the whole distrust of the of the media is call it, causing people to be skeptical of the numbers. And um, like, well, I, so you're saying you're, I, you're skeptical, um, kind of the opposite. Maybe maybe you're skeptical, the opposite of me, though, because when I was at the when at the beginning, when I was skeptical of the numbers, I was thinking that Bali was under reporting because they would be trying to protect the economy. So they, they would be like, oh yeah, we're the best place to hang out during COVID, right? We don't have many cases. And I was thinking, <laughs> that's impossible. How could we not have cases? So I thought they were under-reporting. And you're saying you're skeptical that the government is over-reporting to scare people? No, I think lots of people here do believe that. Um, um, I would, yeah, I wouldn't rule it out because um, I really... I, I don't know. I was the thing I was most confused about was um, the asymptomatic spread, which um, just like the research kept changing on it. Like in March, when it first became a pandemic, it was, it was because this thing spreads without people having symptoms. They don't know that they have it. They can give it to somebody else very easily. Um, and then they were like, "Oh, the who or the World Health Organization or whatever was like, oh, never mind. That's actually not true. It's very, very rare." I actually would be very curious to know how many of those cases are symptomatic because that's not something that they release. That's mm. not that's not information that we know. What's your opinion on the whole thing? Um, I don't know. Like, I don't go out because uh, Anga's super paranoid. It's better if I accommodate for his anxiety. And I and I was really anxious about it at the beginning too. Because mm -hmm. I didn't trust what the government was saying. Um, because yeah. I, I figured uh, Jokowi, like, or the Indonesian president, he was going to be like mostly concerned about the economy and not for my health as an individual. Because it's not right. his job to worry about me as an individual. His job is to make sure his country remains strong, right? right? Yeah. Um, so I was but like, I don't, like yeah, so I don't believe anything uh, he says. Um, not that I think he did a horrible job. I mean, he knows his yeah. people better than I know his people. Um, uh, and you know how the masses react to news. Uh, but yeah, like all the lies and all the, <laughs> the hush, hush, don't tell them this, don't tell them that made me not trust what he was saying, but he did have one, uh, video that was good. He, at the beginning when people were like kind of panicking, like, oh my God, uh, everything's gonna go to shit and then he 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 took them on a tour of some rice warehouse and he said look at all of our rice and he took us through like the factory or whatever and it was just like this is all Indonesia's rice we have lots of rice <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I thought oh that's actually a good that's actually a good video though because then you're like there's not going to be a famine look at all the rice in the warehouse I don't know it was, it was cute <laughs> So I like I like that video, um, but yeah, I, I thought Justin Trudeau did a better job of uh, like explaining things. Like you know, well he would say don't go because at the beginning we didn't know what it was. We didn't really know anything about the virus, so it right. could have been worse than it turned out, right? Like it's right. I mean, it's a pandemic. It's bad and everything, but it's not as bad as it could be. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And thank God it wasn't Ebola. Thank God it was COVID-19 and not Ebola. Can you imagine? Oh my God. Yeah. That would be terrifying. But yeah, no, at the beginning with all the unknowns about like, what are the effects? Like, does it damage your internal organs for life after you, like, after you get it? Is it like, is it like the chicken pox? Like once you get it, it comes back to attack you again when you're 60. Like what kind of, all those things were unknown. Like I wanted Indonesia to lock down. Like, hey, let's like lock down for like two months. Don't let anybody in. Like Vietnam is clean now. Vietnam, they are back to no, life as no. normal. They did uh, the strict lockdown. My boyfriend is really paranoid and worried about it too. He and, doesn't want to um, get it or paranoid about what? He he thinks that his grandma might get it. He's in, he, he lives here. He's lived here for the past 10 years, but he's Malaysian. And Oh, you're with grandma, the Malaysian? 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, yay! Yeah, so he, um, yeah, he hasn't seen her in 10 years, so he's just like, oh, I hope I get to see her before she dies, if she, if she, you know, he's just worried that he hopes that she doesn't get it, and that he's allowed to, and that we're allowed to travel and go, go see her before, right, you know, yeah. Oh, grandma's in Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah he wasn't able to see his grandpa pass either, so... Mm. He's, he's yeah and our and our uncle uh just passed away yeah uh i guess today just, for you yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah and and uh our cousin couldn't see him he was just on the way to the hospital very sad yeah all right well um thank you for um sharing yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> recording so we can talk more about personal things okay yeah yeah let's stop recording and talk about personal things okay so a fake a fake bye to the scribers <laughs> bye scribers <laughs>